We've got the man who who puts in the who puts in the the, the hardware. Um, uh, another superstar who's who's really uh, really brought along with Dr. Hardwick brought deep brain stimulation to Ohio Health. Dr. Grish Ramoth, who we're not allowing to speak about the hardware today in terms of the deep brain stimulation, but we have uh, new technology FDA approved a few years ago high-intensity focused ultrasound, which we also have here, and he's going to tell us about that. So thanks so much, Doc. I'm also not as tall as Dr. Henkel, so I have to put the mic down. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to the talk. Um, is there an echo? Do you guys hear an echo? Yeah, we're good? Okay. Um, so today, uh, I'm a neurosurgeon. I, I specialize in DBS and epilepsy uh, surgery, as Dr. Uh, Harvick mentioned. She's my partner in crime, so I'm the guy that puts in electrodes. But today, my talk is about a different procedure. It's called high-intensity focused ultrasound, which you can think of, um, and I'll use her words, you can think of as the stroke that you buy, and that's what it really is. It, it, um, it makes tremor better, and that's sort of what we're using it for. Um, next slide. So what is tremor? So if you look it up in the medical textbook, it's a rhythmic involuntary oscillatory movement about a fixed point. It means everybody has a tremor. If you really concentrate, you, everybody has a little bit of a physiological tremor that's normal, but then there's pathological tremor that you know, is, is more movement than, um, than that would allow people to do their daily activities with. The primary tremor in Parkinson's is, of course, a rest tremor. It's a tremor that if I place my hand, my muscles are not fighting gravity, and so in a Parkinsonian tremor, the, my hand starts to shake. As soon as I start to move it, the tremor disappears, which is sort of the opposite of what's called a kinetic tremor, which is whenever the muscles are trying to fight gravity or moving. So if I have my hand outstretched, it's not a action tremor, but I'm still activating my muscles against so that my hand can be, you know, fighting gravity. Uh, and so that tremor is basically the most common tremor that we treat, but that's an essential tremor. There are other forms of tremor as well. Um, and really, you know, the movement disorders neurologists are are the foundation of my work because they're the ones that see the patient and, and understand and are able to tease out the kind of tremor that would get better with treatment and the kind of tremor that probably won't get better with either DBS or with ultrasound treatment. So central tremor, it's a little bit of a busy slide. Um, long and short of it is that it's the most com common form of tremor. Uh, most people have an upper extremity tremor and that's really the, the kind of tremor that we're trying to fix. People come to my, my office and they say, well, I've got a head bobbing tremor, or I've got a leg tremor. Treatment, neither DBS nor ultrasound is very beneficial for that. It's primarily beneficial for hand tremor and upper extremity tremor. Um, of course, the first line of treatment is medication, um, primidone, propranolol, benzodiazepines. We treat people with the central tremor as well as people who have tremor predominant Parkinson's disease when the hallmark of Parkinson's disease is mainly tremor. These people almost have you know, no or very little uh, symptoms of rigidity, slowness of movement, and their primary feature in Parkinson's disease is tremor. And this is a good treatment for that. Um, so Dr. Hardwick talked, of course, about DBS, which you can think of as a brain pacemaker. We're not really destroying anything. We're not really cutting anything out of the brain. We're basically you know, eliminating some of the abnormal rhythms in the brain that are driven by the lack of dopamine in Parkinson's disease or in tremor predominant Parkinson's disease. Whereas the ultrasound treatment, the focus ultrasound is a lesioning. It's recreating, we're creating a small hole about as big as three grains of rice. Now, this has existed, in fact, this is actually older than DBS. Um, you know, 60 years ago, there were surgeons that were placing little probes in the brain using what's called a Newman encephalogram where we would inject contrast you know, into the fluid filled chambers of the brain getting x-rays and based off of an atlas, a brain atlas, we would say, you know, 
X, Y, Z, this is where we need to make a little lesion, and lo and behold, the tremor disappeared. Of course, DBS is a better treatment because uh, we're not having to make an irreversible lesion. But lesioning without having to stick a probe in somebody's brain also has its own advantages because I'm not having to put any hardware in, it's an outpatient procedure, um, it's, not a, it's not a, quote, surgery, there's no incision. So <clears throat> one of the three targets that Dr. Hardwick was talking about, this is a th target in the thalamus, it's a part of the brain that you can think of it sort of like an intersection pathway, which is where, you know, to try to perform a motor movement or to perceive some type of sensation, this is the part of the brain that has to be activated. And this part of the brain helps us to control nice coordinated movements. And it's the target for tremor, people who have tremor predominant Parkinson's disease or people who have uh, essential tremor. Um, so, you know, about 100 years ago, there was a surgeon that was um, operating to try to remove a tumor, and he happened to coagulate one of the tiny little arteries in the brain that was going to the globus pallidus. The patient had Parkinson's disease. The patient woke up without any Parkinson's symptoms. It was sort of an unexpected um, effect of the surgery. And so uh, his name was Irving Cooper. He's in New York. And so that sort of spurred the study of how Parkinson's disease can be treated surgically. And so, you know, the target, the primary target was the globus pallidus. And people and surgeons would go in, make a small lesion in the pallidum, and Parkinson's symptoms would disappear. Unfortunately, it also led to a lot of side effects that were irreversible. We make an irreversible lesion. The benefits are durable, but so are the side effects, unfortunately, which is why, um, you know, we switched to DBS, and we're sort of having this sort of cyclical process where we're re-exploring lesioning. Um, and the newest avatar of that is what we're talking about today, which is using an ultrasound to create a lesion. So... It's basically, not that I've ever done this because I was a good boy, but if you've taken a magnifying glass uh, on a hot day and you, a sunny day, and you point it at an insect and you can like instantly like kill the insect, I've never done that, but <laughs> that's almost exactly what we're doing with the ultrasound. There are about a thousand beams of ultrasound energy that are transferred into this one spot on the thalamus that can create a small hole in the brain. And while this technology exists, for us to understand how, what, part, what tissue is getting heated up and can we avoid the heat from spreading to the, you know, to the structures around it that, we're, that we don't want the heat to go into. That's really um, sort of the, the biggest piece here, the secret sauce, if you will. Um, and that's where we do it under an MRI and we have something called an MR thermogram that tells us how the heat spreads. So we're watching the heat spread and we can keep it concentrated into the part that can improve the tremor but away from the other parts of the brain. Um, so, you know, the human hearing is about 20 to 20,000 hertz. This is 650,000 hertz, so it's above the range of human hearing. That's sort of why it's called ultrasound. And ultrasound can be transmitted through, you know, multiple types of, of um, uh, materials, including the skull. Uh, soft tissues of brain. Um, this is a little bit of uh, how this works. So this ultrasound energy is sort of converted into basically heat and uh, it's focused into this one target as we talked about in the brain. These are some of the slides from the company in SciTech that makes the technology that we use. Um, so if you go in for like a hard ultrasound, you know, the technologist is sort of looking at your heart and that's either like a straight or a divergent beam, but this is uh, a focused ultrasound. It's almost like a knife, if you will. It's like a little scalpel that we make a tiny little hole uh, by being able to point these thousand beams into a single spot. So um, in between sonication, what we call sonication, where we create the lesion, um, the skull and the scalp can get heated up, so actually you wear a little sleeve around when this is done in the MRI machine, and then it sort of, we run water in between the time when we create each treatment to sort of cool down the scalp and the, and the skull. 
Um, so this is a procedure, usually Dr. Hardwick and I do this together. Uh, the patient comes in, um, you know, we have to shave their head, we numb up their scalp, we place a frame, um, and then we walk them over to the MRI machine, and then about two hours in the MRI machine, and we get a baseline scan, and then we hone in on the, t on the target, which is where we would want to make a small uh, hole in the brain. And, uh, sorry, I'm going to run over a couple minutes. Um, and we gradually raise the energy level, just sort of honing in on that target, making sure that the energy is not uh, traveling to an area where we don't want it to. So we gradually ramp up the temperature, we go in and out testing to make sure the tremor is getting better, but there are no side effects. So this is sort of what it's showing. This is sort of like the permanent lesion, and this is sort of the ramp up, and then you can see the doctor sort of testing the tremor. So we, we've had, you know, patients trying to do their, their tasks, you know, we had somebody, you know, uh, they, they want to knit or something. You can try to bring in something that you usually do to make the tremor go away. Um, we had one gentleman said, well, I like to load pellets into my gun. I said, some things we can't do. So, so this is, as you can see, this is sort of like the initial tremor. We, we have you draw a spiral before the procedure, and you can see the spiral is, is not very good. Um, right there, and as the, the temperature is ramped up, you can see the spiral getting better. So, so the initial sonications where we ramp up the energy, those are all reversible. So we, if we stop sort of in the middle, we've not really, you know, uh, made a irreversible lesion. When the temperature reaches, reaches between 55 and about 60 degrees is when we've actually created that permanent lesion. So, so there's good literature for this. Uh, this was one of the first randomized trials. Um, this is out of uh, University of Virginia and, and a multi-center stu uh, uh, study. And it showed that, that at the end of one year, there was significant reduction in the group of patients who underwent this procedure compared to the patients who underwent medical treatment for tremor. Um, and then three-year follow-up also shows persistent good effect uh, during the long term. So this is our first patient. This was um, their drawing of the tremor before the surgery, or before the quote surgery, which is the procedure. And uh, this was um, at, the, at the end, so we had a really good improvement. So we've done about 20 of these cases. Most of our patients have had really good improvement in tremor. Um, we have seen some, you know, complications, complications as in side effect from the, from the procedure, just because the tracks that help you with balance and walking um, travel right next to where we're creating this lesion we often see some gait instability, which usually lasts a few weeks and then it gets better. Even out to about six months, we have seen some people have no obvious weakness in their legs, but say, Doc, once in a while, I just feel like my walking is just a bit off. So we have seen that as one of the side effects. Some mild trouble with speech, also some, some change in the way they taste things. Again, this is sort of what's called a sensory thalamus side effect. Uh, that all seems to improve over the course of time. Um, what are the concerns? Well, um, it's a destructive lesion. So unlike DBS, you know, when we're doing this for Parkinson's disease, for DBS, I can, Dr. Hardwick can, you know, program it. She has a thousand different ways she can uh, focus the, the current, and we've not really made any changes to the brain. She can turn it off, and it's like we've done nothing. But this is a destructive lesion. At the end of the lesion, I can't really change anything. So that's the one sort of disadvantage uh, compared to DBS. Of course, we just talked about the trouble with walking and the trouble with speech. The other thing is, how long does this last? Well, if you we look at, you know, 60 years ago when they would create a similar lesion by placing a probe in the brain, we think it would last more than 15 years. But with this procedure, we just don't have the data. We assume that it should last just as long, but we don't know. Um, of course, when somebody has a DBS on one side and they want to get, you know, uh, an ablation on the other side, we can't do that, so because of DBS, we can't do it in a, in a, with, the, with the system that we have. And if we try to ablate somebody, but then their tremor recurs, um, can we do DBS after that? And that's an open question, we don't know. Of course, the, the newest iteration is not just tremor, but using the ultrasound to create lesions in the pallidum and the subthalamic nucleus, the same targets that we use DBS for, 
And uh, there's good literature that shows that it's, it has a very beneficial effect on people with Parkinson's symptoms that are not tremor predominant. We've not yet done that, but I think that's, that's sort of, you know, forthcoming in the next, within the next year or two. Okay. Right. Any questions? All right, well, thank you so much. Uh, we